Welcome back to Tech Yes City. Today we're just going to get straight in to the benchmarks and I'm going to talk about two of the most hottest cards in my opinion, well actually the two hottest cards of 2014 and that is the R9 290 and the GDX 970. So I've both got the Gigabyte WinForce editions here so this will pretty much be a apples to apples comparison. We're going to be comparing these two graphics cards to find out which is better for gaming. However, I will factor in price as well. And since the Gigabyte uh, R9 290 wasn't overclocked, I decided to overclock it to the factory overclocked settings from Gigabyte themselves. So what you'll be seeing here is pretty much a factory overclocked card versus a factory overclocked card. And let's get on with it. So the first game up now is Watch Dogs. This is 1440p Ultra. I just decided to run a uh, part of the open world where cars and everything was running. It was a controlled benchmark, single player, no variance at all, or practically very little. And we can see here that the GDX 970 did beat the R9 290 at 1440p Ultra. By, I would consider this a significant margin. I mean, we've got here 42.48 average FPS versus 53 average FPS. Uh, moving on now to Shadows of Mordor. This is at 1440p Ultra. I just decided for this test to use the in-house uh, benchmarking utility. So again, these benchmarks are going to be um, all different kinds of benchmarks. I'm going to put in some controlled benchmarks, put in some multiplayer benchmarks for you guys. Uh, so you're getting a bit of everything to see how this is a these Gravis cards perform in the real world. So we got here the GDX 9, uh, 970 scored 68.19 average FPS versus the R9 290. Uh, scoring 59.08 FPS. However, it was important to note here that the GDX 970 did pull over twice the minimum frames of the R9 290, which I consider to be quite important since the frame rates are sort of hanging around 60 FPS here. So for the smoothest gameplay experience in Shadows of Mordor, I'd probably recommend going with the R9 290 if you're on PC. Um, sorry, I mean the GDX 970. What, what am I going here? I'm going crazy. Anyway, let's move on now to Advanced Warfare. 1440p Ultra. We've got here the GDX 970 scoring 112.4 frames per second versus the R9 290 scoring 95.08 frames per second. So uh, there's a little bit of an advantage here to the GDX 970. They both play um, Advanced Warfare absolutely fine though if you were one of those person or people who are serious uh, about getting maybe 144 hertz monitor then you might want to go with the GDX 980 even uh, get even a more of a beast of a graphics card in there but let's move on now to Warlords of Draenor the latest uh, expansion from World of Warcraft now I actually forgot to increase the max um, uh, FPS, so there was actually an FPS limiter in this game, but once I finished, I, I actually decided that both these graphics cards ran World of Warcraft absolutely fine. It was as smooth as butter on both the GDX 970 and the R9 290, so there wasn't much of a difference here. Both of these cards ran this game absolutely fine. I think you could probably run World of Warcraft on a potato for what it's worth. Uh, anyway, let's move on now to Battlefield 4. This is the test range at 1440p Ultra. Uh, this is another single player control benchmark. Where we've got here the GDX 970 out of the box scoring 110.08 average FPS versus the R9 290 scoring 82.56. So actually not out of the box. The R9 290 is overclocked to the overclocked out of the box settings. Uh, anyway, let's move on now to Crisis 3 1440p Ultra. We've got here 35.92 average FPS from the GDX 970 versus R9, the R9 290 with 31.54. So not a lot in that one except the minimum frame rates are to be noted there. The GDX 970 did have a significant advantage in the minimum frame rates with the R9 290 dropping down to 17 and the GDX 970 dropping down to 29. So that about wraps it up for the benchmarks, though I will give you guys a quick look at power consumption. The R9 290 uses up on average about 90 watts more than the GDX 970. Uh, so you will, I mean, you will want to have a better power supply or a power supply with higher wattage if you are indeed going to run the R9 290 over the GDX 970. It's not a huge amount, but it is worth noting. So the GDX 970 does use less power. And in turn, this since it does use less power, it does mean that the temps will be lower on the card. It's a, I think it's a lot easier to cool a GDX 970 than an R9 290, as shown here in the max temps. This was done uh, with the ambient degrees at around about 15 degrees Celsius. So this was the overclock settings too. I just max overclocked both cards, and they both 
ran actually pretty cool. This was measured with afterburners temperature sensor uh, graph thing. So uh, the max was 60 degrees on the GDX 970 and the max was uh, 74 degrees on the R9 290. So in conclusion, it doesn't matter which way you go. If you go with an R9 290 or if you go with a GDX 970, they're both going to do a really good job of playing AAA titles at 1440p. Uh, 1080p, that's out of the question. Both these graphics cards will destroy games at 1080p. So I didn't even include the benchmarks in there because they're not worth including. If you want to step it up to 4K, then you may wish to think about getting two of these graphics cards in SLI or Crossfire. Uh, though me, I'm a single GPU man myself. I love single GPUs due to it just giving the best experience, in my opinion, in most games. Uh, but that's up to you guys, uh, whatever floats your boat. However, I will say that if you can get the R9 290 at $250 and you're just gaming, it is a great buy for that price. Uh, also, similarly, the GDX 970 is also a fantastic buy for the money, if you can pick it up for $330. Now, we all know that, that $330 price uh, tag is kind of a little bit in the air at the moment because there's just so much demand for the GDX 970, so the prices have gone up. And, I mean, it's obvious to see why. If you looked at the benchmarks, you can see why the GDX 970 is a beast, and it does all this while running cool and using less power than also its previous architecture and also the AMD architecture. So the GDX 970 is pretty much a really hot card at the moment, but I mean, if you can pick up the R9 290 and you're on a real budget, this card will also do a great job of uh, playing games at 1440p. Uh, besides the FPS, I have done a full review of the R9 290. If you guys wish to watch it, uh, watch it, not wash it. And if you wish to wash it, then whatever, come to my house and wash the graphics card for me and destroy it. But uh, if you wish to watch the video, I'll put a link in the description below where you can check out the R9 290 full review where I talk about, also I address the issue of AMD micro stuttering. Uh, I also talk about some things that I noticed when I was playing games with the R9 290. But for what it's worth, if you're a AAA title guy, both these graphics cards are going to be absolute uh, heaven for gaming at 1440p. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this review, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment in the comment section below, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. I've also got a CUDA versus OpenCL versus CPU only productivity benchmarks to come, so stay tuned for that, and bye.